Two Guys in a Comic Book. I'm Ulysses E. Campbell, this is Patrick Michael Strange, and we're coming to you from Jeppe's Entertainment Museum here in beautiful Baltimore, Maryland, in the historic Inner Harbor area. Now, ordinarily, we talk about comics on this show, but we're going to open this week on something of a somber note due to tragic events that occurred earlier at the opening of The Dark Knight Rises. Patrick? Yes. Uh, unfortunately, uh, out in Aurora, Colorado on July 20th, 2012, uh, the midnight premiere showings, uh, families were gathered all across the U.S. to see the, the film The Dark Knight Rises, and uh, a lone gunman uh, came into uh, one of the theaters and uh, killed about 12 victims, wounded several others, and uh, so uh, as we open the show, we just want to send our prayers um, to those families that were affected by this tragedy. Um, it's just a sad state of affairs that, you know, we go to these films to be entertained and, you know, uh, our lives were taken. And so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really kind of feeling the moment right now. Um, but I also want to send our thanks to those heroes that actually stood up and uh, saved the, the lives of others that uh, were taken um, and in also doing, having their lives taken by um, such a heroic act. Um, we thank those families, uh, those people that saved others, and our prayers are with those families that were affected and now have lost loved ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the heroic actions of some of the victims and those other people, pushing people to the ground, getting them out of the line of fire, that truly exemplifies the heroic nature of comic heroes that we all idolize and hope to emulate. And uh, we had some people who actually emulated those heroes at the cost of their own lives. So uh, we'd just like to note that and uh, pay some homage to those people who suffered, who continue to suffer, and uh, I guess just have a moment yeah. of silence. All right, let's do it. Hi, I'm Steve Jeppe, and I'd like to welcome you to Jeppe's Entertainment Museum. In 1974, I quit my job as a letter carrier at the U.S. Postal Service and opened a small comic book store in the basement of a TV repair shop. Little did I realize that from that humble beginning would grow this incredible pop culture collection you see here today. At the center of that collection is the comic character, the Brownies, Buster Brown, Mickey Mouse, the Lone Ranger, Superman, Barbie. These are just some of the characters who've made a tremendous impact on our individual childhoods while at the same time shaping our collective experience. All right, we're back. Welcome to Two Guys in a Comic Book. Patrick, Yuli, um, we want to discuss Comic-Con. We just had Comic-Con 2012. I Have you seen the coverage on TV? I didn't go to Comic Con. Neither did I. What's a good talk right. about Comic Con? You can't I get a ticket nowadays. To. You have to be there to get a ticket nowadays. But I did hear, 2013, no tickets were sold at the show this year. Really? No. You're kidding. I just read that online today. Wow. For 2013, you have to go online to buy your tickets. They're going to have it open up uh, sometime next year, but they didn't sell, sell any tickets. Well, that's so all that right. means. Chances are the two guys in a comic book <laughs> may be able to go to Comic Con 2013. Oh man, bump that! How does that we, sound? We're gonna get pressed here, baby. Yeah, I'm telling you. Oh, true, true. So, uh, with the news coming out of Comic Con, I'm big news. In. There's some big, big news. news. The Marvel films. Movie, me at movies, you, man. You know, it's, movies. Uh, okay, which one of those movies are you looking forward to more? What they they announced? Iron Man three. Iron Man three. Uh, Thor. Thor Dark uh, World. Yes. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians, and Guardians of the Galaxy. And Ant-Man. Ant-Man. You know, but I, I know a little bit of who's behind it, so I'm, I'm kind of, you know, looking forward to that. And uh, Captain America Winter Soldier. Oh, yes. I it's forgot about that, that one. Yeah. How can I forget about the Winter Soldier? <laughs> and, and Iron Man 3. We saw I the... the, the, the suit. Oh, you did? Yes. Okay. The, the, well, <laughs> the, the suit. The suit. <laughs> The suit, the gold, the more gold than red suits. Yeah, I got let's it. Go, let's it. start with Iron Man 3. Since okay, they're taping okay. right now in North Carolina, um, I've seen some of this stuff online. Try not to look at it too much, but because I'm also an actor outside of comic books, I'm tracking it, seeing see if some of my buddies are uh, working on that. But uh, the armor. Let's discuss the armor. There's been many suits of armor we've seen, you know, uh, of Iron Man. And so, to me, personally, before I get your take, you know, we th he's always upgrading his armor. That's a note of... Uh, I, of Tony Stark, Iron Man, the different Mark 
threes, fours. You know, I, I like the various armors. So if you're not too keen with this gold and red armor, you'll get yeah, your other relax. armor back. You know, because it's going to be it's, different. That's just how technology Tony Stark upgrades is. are all yeah. part of the game, it, and and that's what makes it mm -hmm. such a great character. Mm -hmm. So I'm good with the gold and red armor. The gold, well, it's always been red and gold, but this is more gold. Well, it was and gray red accent to start off with. That true as yeah. well. So. so what did your take on the armor? Well, I want to quickly go back to something you said about the nature of Iron Man. Because okay. this is one of the key elements to why this character is so popular. Um, at one point, the technology was not sufficient to be able to pull ordinary people into this. Now, and i got to tell you, Iron Man is my favorite Marvel character. Huge Iron Man fan, have been for a number of years. Did I not know that? I think I knew that. <laughs> you do now. Now I know, knowing's <laughs> yeah. half the battle. But the key is, this that was perceived as being science fiction at one point, now audiences go in and they can accept it. The technology has advanced behind, you know, cellular phones and personal computers and all the myriad technology that we have. People, it's not that great a stretch for them to imagine that a guy could really build a suit like this that augments him to the point where he can do all this. In fact, I understand, and you probably know more about this than I would with your military background, but I understand that the military has a exoskeleton that is, I mean, it, it's a crude sort of thing, but a guy can put it on and lift hundreds of pounds that and he correct. wouldn't ordinarily be able to lift. And so the, the real Iron Man is coming. But, Very true. Yeah, Very but, true. but the key is, is that this stuff isn't too far off and audiences can easily accept that a guy could build a suit like this as opposed to being bit, bitten by a radioactive spider or hit by cosmic rays or a glowing ring come down from outer space and give you powers, you know. This is, Definitely. you know, perceived as being something that's reasonable. Definitely. Although, and with that being said, one of the things I've learned about this new armor that's going to be utilized in Iron Man 3, which is going to kind of now, with that being said, that it's believable that we can have that. The twist that's going to be in Iron Man 3 is they're actually going with the extremist armor in Iron Man. Yes, I heard that. That might boggle some people's minds and who don't or not very familiar with the extremist well, armor. And I was going to say, for those of you who don't know, for those of you who don't know, extremist was a sort of um, biotechnology that Tony Stark employed. There was a, a six issue series, um, the extremist series, uh, coincidentally, where um, he fought a guy who had had this like black gook injected into him and the armor was strong enough to be able to fight this guy but the interface wasn't I love using words like that <laughs> the interface wasn't sufficient Stark was not able to operate the armor quickly enough to react to what this guy was doing so he adjusted the extremist package injected it into himself and had a biological interface for the very first time with his armor. And that allowed instantaneous communication between the synapses of Stark's brain and the relays of the armor. I mean, I was, and the art was fantastic too. Yes, it was. painted art. Who did the art on that? I know you know. Adi Granoff. And yeah, actually, to put a go. shout out, if you don't want to read the book, but I highly suggest oh, reading the book. The Motion Comic. The Motion Comic. The Motion Comic. By Shout Thank Factor. You. you can get it at yes, Walmart. Yes, good call. Nine ninety nine. Oh. I think. Great, great, great story. Um, mm -hmm. There we go. All right. So, well, uh, hey, but I think we're due for a break. Yeah, we're getting pushed. Stay right there. Don't go away because we got a lot more to talk about oh, yeah. on Two Guys in a Comic Book coming up next. As you wander through these halls, you will see the history of the country and our changing society reflected in those characters and the media through which they entertained us. Why are these characters so important to us? Perhaps it is their power to distract us. They've brought us relief in times of trouble like the Great Depression and World War II. Today, they help us escape the pressure and stress of our ordinary, everyday lives. And we're back to Two Guys in a Comic Book. Having I'm Ulysses E. Campbell. This is Patrick Michael Strange. And we were talking Iron Man at the break. Okay. One thing I wanted to close out with as far as the Iron Man discussion, um, in addition to the more gold than crimson armor that we saw at the uh, Comic-Con, mm -hmm. there were also some set pictures that got out Oh, of yeah. War Machine. Yes. Now, War Machine was looking more like the Iron Patriot, who some of you may know is the long dead Norman Osborn. I don't really understand how Norman Osborn is back. Yeah. I saw Norman Osborn.
Way back in Spider-Man 122, <laughs> the Goblin Flyer impaled him, and next thing you know, he goes to Europe for like a precedent-setting operation where he returns and shows Spider-Man the scar on his chest. And I still don't know how this guy is back, but Norman Osborn was the Iron Patriot. I don't think we have a long enough uh, time right now to go into all of that, but definitely go on Wikipedia and read some of those materials so you can understand what's going on. Uh, I've been reading comics for forever, and I leave it and come back and I get lost too. It's crazy, but yes, I, I saw that armor, weird. I'm curious how that's all gonna play out when we finally see the film, but uh, mm -hmm. in regards to biotechnology and that weird effect of how the extremist armor comes onto uh, yeah, Iron Man. Yeah, seeps out of his pores. To me, it kind of, uh, th that kind of was a knock off of uh, one of my favorite heroes, Amazing Spider-Man, when ah. he got the, the Venom suit and that would come onto oh, him, the yes. alien, mm -hmm. you know, biosymbiote thing. Then the um, Secret Wars. Exactly. The but I don't want to talk Wars. about that and go into Spider-Man 3, which will, I, I, if I don't have enough time to tell you how bad Spider-Man 3 was. But Let's talk about this new movie. reboot. Yeah. Amazing Spider-Man that uh, what did they think of it? slammed, slammed in the up. box office. Ka-chunk. ka, -chunk. ka -chunk. <laughs> um, I enjoyed it. I was shocked for myself that I enjoyed it. Um, to me, it's on par with the first uh, Spider-Man film. Two and three weren't all that great um, to me, but uh, I actually was pleasantly surprised. I was going in not liking it so quick after uh, Spider-Man 3, and uh, here we are with Amazing Spider-Man. Um, I thought Andrew Garfield, um, while not as likable for me as Tobey Maguire, um, fit the look um, a little bit too New Yorker for me. There wasn't a likable quality to, him, to, me, to me. Toby's a lot more likable. Um, I enjoyed More sympathetic. Uh, Gwen Stacy. Yeah. Loved Gwen. Uh, Loved Gwen. Well, Gwen should have been in it from the beginning. True. You know, I mean, uh -oh. in fact, that whole little riff they did with the Green Goblin and, you know, oh, the woman you know, love or suffer the little children. I mean, that, that was Gwen. You know, I yeah. mean, and they couldn't do it right because Mary Jane had to survive, you know? And everybody knew Mary Jane because that was at the time his wife, which now isn't his wife, but we won't go there. There's so many twists and turns that comic books are doing right now. We don't have the time, but Kirk Connors' Lizard I thought was done well. Really scary. Um, it, really scary. I enjoyed the film. Mr. Yuli Campbell, have you seen it yet? Yeah, I've seen. You it. did see it. Oh heck yeah! I, I didn't know if we had discussed oh, this off kidding? air. So yeah. uh, I want your thoughts. Well, I enjoyed it. I liked the fact that they had Gwen Stacy. I thought that she was a very necessary addition to the whole Spider-Man legend because Spider-Man. Let's face it. Spider-Man is supposed to be slightly more vulnerable than a lot of superheroes. And as is evidenced by the fact that his girlfriend got killed by his arch enemy, you know? Yeah. So you need to have Gwen because ultimately, sadly, Gwen needs to die. I mean, Spider-Man's life is touched by tragedy. Yes. And, you know, that was a necessary part of the Spider-Man movie, Amazing Spider-Man. Spoilers coming up. If you haven't <laughs> seen it, you're gonna wanna turn the sound down here because, um, you know, they had uh, Gwen's dad you yes. know, and uh, Captain you know, Stacey. Yeah, exactly. You know, and played awesomely by Dennis Leary. Indeed, indeed. And I don't ordinarily like Dennis Leary. He kind of <laughs> gets on my nerves, but I thought that he did a better than average turn at the role. Mm -hmm. um, I miss J. Jonah Jameson being in this movie. I would have liked to have I seen did. some Jameson. I did. Um, surprisingly, well, we get him in that uh, Allstate commercial. Uh, you know, is it, is it Allstate? No, it's, no, it's uh, uh, Farmers. Farmers. We I are do farmers. <laughs> <laughs> And we're looking for plugs a away, farmers, you know. Yes. We need um, advertising. Uh, indeed, but um, yeah, no. All that to say, I miss Jameson. Yes. But uh, liked what they gave you. Um, you know, Andrew Garfield, I thought did a better than credible turn at the role. Surprisingly, I liked Sally Field as Aunt May. I uh, like mm -hmm. who knew, you know. And yeah. they got into a little bit more of the background of Spider-Man's parents in this, you know, yes. which you know previously we've only seen in one king-size Spider-Man mm -hmm. and uh, and a Shield yes. uh, special. Because yes. now, you know, they've sort of retconned uh, Peter Parker's parents to make them S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. I mean, they were sort of secret agents before, mm -hmm. but they took it to that next step. So I thought that was interesting. And, uh, I mean, of course, they turned his dad into a scientist in this one. And, oh, he was Curtis Connor's partner. And I'm like, okay, I, I went too crazy <laughs> about that. But he had web shooters. And I love the web shooters because that organic webbing in the first movie always left me cold. I mean, he can't be Spider-Man with organic webbing because what's got to happen to Spider-Man at a key moment when he's fighting like Doc Ock or the Lizard or somebody, he's got to run out of web fluid. You can't run out of web fluid if you're making it, 
you know, in your veins or something. So I didn't mind that so much. I was I, I, at first when the first films came out, I was like, ah, no, we have to have real web shooters. But then I eventually grew to uh, be okay with it. Well, it should now, have been coming out of the I'm other end like, if it was uh, organic. But I, I like it. I, I really appreciate the science. They're really kind of showing you science a little bit more so than mm -hmm. we did. Not, you know, it's not super rocket science, but when he was came into the sewer line and he set the webs oh, yes. into the various pipes. That was pretty cool. To just a ping yeah, in various areas to cover cool. more yeah. area. Uh -huh. Appreciated that. You know, mm -hmm. there's there's a little bit more science brought into it and that to me represented it um, really good in there. And, mm -hmm. and and then the fact that these web shooters and the trial and errors to get to that point, I like that scene where it splashes into <laughs> the webs. So you, so you think it's a good reboot? We're, we're back, we're going to have some better Spider-Mans now? Well, they, you know, you say? they had no choice. I mean, my understanding is that Sam Raimi had walked away from the project. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, apparently, you know, our friend, um, uh, uh, the first guy, I can't think of his name. You just said Wait, it. Sam the, Raimi? No, no, no. Oh, uh, Tobey Maguire? Yeah, Tobey Maguire, okay. thanks. We just said it. Yeah, he, and he didn't want to do it without Sam Raimi. Mm -hmm. So they had two choices. They could either recast the role or they could reboot because Sony didn't want to give up the rights. I yeah. mean, Marvel, Disney, Disney, Marvel, however you want to call them, they're desperate to get the rights back to these characters that they had licensed. Mm -hmm. You know, what is it? Um, you know, Sony's got X Men yes. and uh, Spider Man. Actually, and no, Fox, Fox has. has X -Men. Oh, Fox, that's right. X -Men. Yeah, in fact, Fox has got Fantastic Four. Yeah. Also. Sony has yeah. Ghost Rider and Spider Man. Oh, Ghost Rider, yes. Yeah. I'd almost forgotten about that. I Very say forgettable. I, I think you're right. I, I think you're wrong, right. But well, but I'm somebody's wrong. got it. In any case, yeah. I want to touch upon that. Um, with Sam Raimi leaving Spider-Man and now this whole reboot. Mm -hmm. To me, I, and I love Sam, Sam Raimi, uh, not too particular with this, the, the first couple Spider-Man films, but I am a fan of Army of Darkness and some of his other works. So I am a fan of Sam Raimi. But I, I want to go back to also Dark Knight. Uh, Sam Raimi, you know, at, left the Spider-Man and it was like done. But with this amazing Spider-Man, it proves that, you know, people can still do a good job with Spider-Man. Sam Raimi isn't bigger than Spider-Man. There will always be great Spider-Man films. One of the things I didn't like about this whole Dark Knight Rises and this whole The Dark Knight Trilogy, this is the end and how they've been marketing The Dark Knight Rises, is it's the last. There's no more, you know, and Nolan has been kind of coming off as well as Christian Bale. I like them both, but to me they've been coming off like they're bigger than the franchise. There will be more Batman, so all of you worried out there who went to see Dark Knight Rises and are like, oh no, there's no more Batman films, and Nolan is God. I like Nolan, but he's not bigger than Batman. We're going to get more Dark Knights. I just had to say that. I know you probably want to give some anything And on, on that, that note, but we're going to cut some break. We'll be right back after these messages. Don't go away. <laughs> but there's more to it than that. These characters have played a large and largely unrecognized role in our education. Batman comic books helped me to learn to read when I was five years old. Thanks, big guy. That experience fostered a lifelong love of reading. We're back again. I left off with uh, blasting Nolan a little bit in regards to The Dark Knight Rises and comparing him to how Sam Raimi and uh, the Spider-Man stuff and saying that these guys thought they were bigger than the franchises themselves, but we'll continue to great, get great films uh, from Spider-Man and Batman. So I want to just tell you fans, don't worry, there's more stuff in the pipeline. And those were just my two cents, but um, I know I left a lot on that, so I know Yuli wants to give a little something in regards to that before he branch off into some other stuff. Well, you know, I, I, I'm going to table that for the moment, only okay. because I'm afraid if we got on to Dark Knight Rises, we wouldn't get back, and we and we still got a couple We've of We've got a lot of exciting films. stuff to talk about. Well, yeah, okay. I mean, you know, Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Yes, Bucky Barnes, we lost him uh, coming off the train. Yeah, the Nazi and, train. And the, and the Captain Sorry, America Sorry, the Hydra film. train. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and uh, so he's coming back because if you were a fan of the comic book, Bucky is the Winter Soldier, so I'm really geeking on how that's going to play out because I really enjoyed the storyline in the Captain America comic book. And uh, It was interesting. There's going to be some interesting, interesting characters that are involved with that. One of them being one of my favorites, his uh, later partner, if you're a fan of the comic books, Bucky was his partner, but then there was... Falcon. The Falcon. Yeah. I'm looking forward Sam to Falcon. Wilson. Hopefully, we'll get Red Wing coming in. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool, you know, because you got to get the you got to get these folks around Cap. Cap yes. has got his little entourage of folks. You oh know? yeah, there's some mm -hmm. great characters in the Cap universe that I, I just want to see on that screen. Um, one of the rumors uh, who's been plugged to possibly play the role, Anthony Mackie. Um, he works with uh, uh, the guy who played Hawkeye in uh, that. Oscar-winning film, but that, that I can't recall the name of the film. 
the Hurt Locker. <laughs> the Hurt Locker. Oh my God, there it is. Mm -hmm. I can't believe I didn't. Great <laughs> film if you haven't seen it. Um, Anthony Mackie was in that uh, along with uh, my man Ryan. who played Jeremy Renner. <laughs> <laughs> we got some great people on the cast and the crew helping us out today. <laughs> Anthony Mackie playing the Falcon. Yes. You yeah. like that? Yeah, I love it. I love it. I mean, just being able to have the Falcon, you know? I mean, yes. because. I said, the brother's been getting the short end of the stick here behind it. They should have announced a Black Panther film. I was down at oh, you didn't, Hero don't Charlotte. Go there. I was at Hero Charlotte a few weeks ago. Oh. Stan Lee was there. Stan Lee panel. Stan, they asked him, what movie would you like to see, Stan? Stan says, I'd like to see a Black Panther movie. I'm like, <gasps> and no Black Panther movie announced. I'm like, okay, all right. I didn't okay. want to go there. Um, and this film, or on, hey, on this but, show, but we're gonna cause, have, cause I'm, that's okay. while he's we're an Iron to, Man fan, I'm a have, Black Panther fan. Well, everybody's a Black Panther fan. You know? I'm I mean, a huge Black yeah. Panther hey, fan. But, we, but we got a brother, you know, it's like the Falcon, I'll take it. <laughs> so disappointed. I'll take it. Um, next, next. I, I won't even Guardians go into those of the comments. Galaxy. Guardians but of the you Galaxy. Have, you made me upset Marvel films. Yes. All right. Yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, how, how, are you down with the Guardians down, of the Galaxy? I, I, are you down I, with the I'm, Guardians I'm, of the Galaxy? Because you're a young guy, see? The Guardians of the Galaxy I'm, that I knew were Major Vance Astro. Uh, sorry. Astro. Astro, yes. Martinex. Yandu. Charlie 27. Starhawk. Nikki. Starhawk. Yeah, you're, you're okay. All right, you know. You know. Jim right. Valentino was on that <laughs> stuff, man. I, oh, Guardians. I'm a big Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. fan. Now, and those aren't I the Guardians that we're getting. No, no <laughs> they're getting not. Henry, uh, sorry, Peter Quill. Star-Lord. Yes. Uh, uh, Rocky Raccoon. Destroyer. Groot. Yeah, yeah, Groot. I am Groot. Drax the I Destroyer. Yeah. You know, and Drax is okay. You I know? gotta say, I... Rocket Raccoon is okay. I he, love, I mean... He's a cool little character. He's got a cool little alliterative name. Yes. You know, and he's like Curses a cute like little a fuzzy raccoon. Yeah, you know. Uh, uh, I'm, like you, familiar with the old Guardians of the Galaxy from mm -hmm. the 80s. Um, I enjoyed that storyline. Um, not until recently did I start becoming more familiar with the new iteration of Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, I think it was Annihilation that was this big yes. uh, cosmic crossover that was mm -hmm. going on with Star-Lord and Silver Sapphire and Quasar. Mm -hmm. um, it looks really cool, but I've been so busy I haven't had a chance to read it. But when I saw this new Guardians it. coming cool. out, <laughs> I picked all the trades up. I have all the trades. Ah, okay. So I'm going to be reading it hopefully by the next show to give you some more input on what I think. But I did catch them on an episode of uh, Avengers Earth and Mightiest Heroes. Oh, yes. They made an appearance. And that and was pretty true to form. I thought they were awesome. This group character, yeah. this tree-looking type guy. Yeah, they, they did the cool Korvac saga with their... Yeah, yeah the Korvac you know, saga. Yeah, kind of interesting. You know, if you don't know what the Korvac saga is, Wikipedia. I'm not going to take the time now. <laughs> you know. But it looked really cool to me. So mm -hmm. I'm geeking. Although I will say, having, after they announced it, you know, like all of us super geeks, we went in and we wanted to get more information on what exactly, how they're going to portray these characters, how, what storylines they're going to play off of. Uh, they don't From what I understand, do. they're not even going to really give us Guardians of the Galaxy. They're going to give us Guardians of the Galaxy, but they're really going to cover Star-Lord, no, well, not Star-Lord, but uh, Nova more than the true team oh, and how nova from what i well this is internet rumor mind you so let's let's preface this with that but it's they're gonna follow richard Ryder, nova mm -hmm. him going into becoming a part of the guardians of the galaxy mm -hmm. and then all of them i guess then doing their thing yeah. and of course so, the nova core being Marvel's i guess they couldn't sell the nova the film. green lantern core yeah well i mean who could you might as well do a speedball film you know yes true. but but all right thor New Thor movie coming. Thor Dark World. Um, yeah. I didn't read too much on what they're going to do with that, but I'm going to be uh, checking that out as well. I know my wife is. She loves Chris Hemsworth. Uh. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, after Avengers, uh, Thor and Loki went back. So I'm curious how they're going to portray that. And this whole Dark World thing is very intriguing. So mm -hmm. that was cool. I think I'm geeking over Winter Soldier more than uh, Dark World. And I would have to say, out of Cap, uh, the, the, the big three, Cap, Thor, Iron Man, I'd say I'm more interested in Cap, followed by Iron Man, and then Thor. With the new stuff, I think I'm interested more in Ant-Man more than Guardians of the Galaxy. Well, you know, I was getting ready to make a crack So let's go with Ant-Man. I'm waiting for Ant-Man, not. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, okay, no, all right, this is the thing. If you're going to do Ant-Man, the time to do Ant-Man was before, so you could put him in the Avengers as he was a member of the original Avengers. But not only are they not doing that, well, of course, they can't do that because that, that ship has sailed. But now I understand that Ant-Man isn't even going to be Henry Pym. It's going to be, and apparently it's not, I, I don't even think it's going to be Scott Lang. Lang. I think it's going to oh. be like this new guy because really? we've had several iterations of Ant-Man. 
And I mean, who knows? Yeah, you know. Okay. Now yeah. I don't think I'm. So they could, interested. Yeah, they could make Garrett this. Morris Ant Man, as far as I'm yeah. concerned. <laughs> Garrett Morris. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to cut to break. Uh, we'll be back well, no, with no. some more great. We're out of guys. time. We're out of time. Yeah, this was the last. No more fun. Yeah, no, no more fun. <laughs> I know, well, we can still, when the camera roll, squits roll, we can still have All right. We can stay right here. They have to turn the lights out on us. All right, <laughs> let's do that. This has been another great episode. I'm Patrick. Ulysses Campbell, two guys in a comic book. Check us out. All right. I had dreamed of creating this museum for almost 30 years, but where to build it? When I toured Camden Station for the first time in 2003, I realized I had finally found the home these characters so richly deserved. Abraham Lincoln passed through this building four times. When Babe Ruth left his boyhood home of Baltimore to play for the Boston Red Sox, he took a train from this very station. Today, the first floor houses sports legends at Camden Yards, a museum which chronicles the history. I've been called Baltimore's biggest cheerleader. Guilty as charged. Heck, I even bought the City Magazine. I was born and raised in Little Italy, an ethnic neighborhood just across the Inner Harbor from here. I love this city and all of its spectacular attractions. From the National Aquarium and the Science Center, to the Walters Art Gallery and Museum of African American History and Culture, to the restaurants of Fells Point and Little Italy, Baltimore has something for everyone. I urge you to visit all of those places and experience everything this magnificent city has to offer. But first, I'd like you to take a trip with me in my time machine to discover or revisit all the wonderful characters, friends I call them, that have shaped our popular culture. And don't be afraid to say, hey, I had that when I was a kid. I do it all the time.